and welcome back to another episode. Always so glad to have you with us. We are here today because we finally got pushed a software update. On Friday last week, we re we broke the news about range being increased on the Tesla Model Y, which was super exciting. 10 miles additional range per EPA, and it was assumed that this was potentially a hardware thing. Well, it turned out a few hours after this news broke that it's actually a software update. So Friday afternoon, everybody was looking and waiting and waiting and waiting, uh, some of us more impatiently than others, myself being one of those, for that update to hit our car. And um, so we finally, here we are Tuesday, Tuesday evening, we finally got the update. Um, we actually, 40.7 was the update that people were getting initially. It's now up to 40.8, so they probably just added a few bug fixes. Fantastic to finally get this. What we're going to do, we're allowing the car to download the update and we're going to update the car so we're going to take a look at what our full range is now at a hundred percent estimate and then we'll look at it again after the update and see what kind of additional range that we're going to gain from this update so if the new car is going to get 10 this is a highway commuting car so if we get 10 i'd be stoked i doubt we'll get 10 we'll see however that works but anyways this is a highway car, so when you see our 100% range, don't be alarmed. It's not battery degradation. It's just an estimate based on how you drive. It recently got cold. We're using the heat a lot more, so um, our 100% estimated range is probably lower than most um, because this car drives 80 miles an hour almost all the time. So anyways, super excited to share this with you. I've been waiting anxiously for this update, and now we have it, so... Let's go ahead and get this downloaded and see what we get. So I just looked on the app and at 100%, our projected range is 283 miles and 240 at roughly 85%, which is what we charge normally. That's not battery degradation. That's just computer is continually updating to a more realistic number of what our range will be. So, so 283 miles of range at 100%. We will let this continue to download the software update and see what we get after it uploads. Very excited to finally, finally, finally have our software update. All right, so the update is done. Let's read through the details. All right, first and foremost, the biggest piece right here, improved efficiency, your car's range has increased with new software that improves the efficiency of the motors and climate control system. Note, these changes do not impact acceleration or overall climate performance, which is great news. So that's a fantastic upgrade. Speed assist improvements in addition to local roads, speed assist now leverages your car's cameras to detect speed limit signs to improve the accuracy of speed limit data. This is a big one. Um, they just rolled out a new way for the car to recognize speed limits. And this has kind of been an issue on catching the right speed when you're in autopilot. So it's automatically adjusting. So by using the cameras, it's gonna validate data and be more accurate, which is great. Priority Bluetooth device. To avoid connecting to the wrong nearby phone, you can now set your priority Bluetooth device. So this is something they continue to try to update and enhance. Um, it's constantly an issue. So now it looks like they're going to say, hey, if there's a priority phone, go ahead. It'll automatically try to connect to that one first before it tries to connect to a different one. So interesting. We'll see how well that works. Glove box pin, which we knew about, is now four digit protected, which is great. Um, but also for the newer cars, apparently the USBs are moving into the glove box, at least in the Model 3. So that'll be exciting when that gets implemented in the Model Y as well, because now you can protect your USB device. So if somebody broke into your car, they can't necessarily get the glove box open and be able to pull your uh, storage device that's got them on camera. So that's great. And then charge port inlet heater. And this was something else we knew about. Now they're allowing the charge port to be heated uh, when it's cold to help defrost the inside of the charge port, which is great because moisture does get back there. And if you're driving in snow, um, that does freeze and it creates an issue when you go to charge. So pretty good improvements. Let's see our improved efficiency. So it looks like in our car, we ended up gaining seven miles of range. We're now at 290 at 100% uh, versus the 283 we were just a few moments ago. And at current 85% instead of 240, now it's 247. So we gained seven miles of range, which is pretty cool. Um, now being at 290 with uh, 12,000, 13,000 miles obviously is frustrating. However, it is not degradation that's causing that. 
Again, this is a highway commuter car. So it's doing 80 miles an hour um, most of the time. And now that uh, it's getting cold, we've been using the heat quite a bit. So it's actually gone down in the last week, took a pretty big jump downward. Um, so it's recognizing that we're using the heat more often, which of course uses more energy. And the range that is displayed on your car is an estimate. And with some of the newer updates of 2020, it started to try to be more accurate on how much range that you have based on how you're driving. So if you have a highway commute, that range estimate is going to go down quite quickly um, versus if you are a city commuter or spend most of the time at city speeds, you'll see that go down a lot slower. It's not degradation. It's not something to be worried about. Um, it, it At first it, it throws you off, but um, probably one of the most common things I see brought up online is about estimated range and it being down. So not to worry, this thing will continue to fluctuate. And if we all of a sudden started driving in the city exclusively, the range is going to go right back up. So, um, again, don't be concerned about that estimated range. So overall, very excited. Awesome that these are the types of updates when we talk about our review videos, some of the software updates and how cool that is. What other car can you get a software update and all of a sudden your car is more efficient? There's no cars that I can think of, certainly over the air, um, that do that. But this, these are the types of updates that you get with a Tesla that are so awesome, so cool, and it continues to just add value to the car um, for, on a personal level, maybe not on a financial level, but... Um, those types of things you don't get in other cars, which is another huge benefit of owning a Tesla is the software updates and some of the added features that you get over time at no additional cost, which is pretty awesome. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Bearded Tesla. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.